Our next, our next presenters are from Cabot School District. That we wanted to get a, a district's perspective on a lot of the things that we discussed today, and um, also demonstrate the communication that this district had between their business office <laughs> and their federal programs. Um, the three from Cabot that will be presenting today are Tina Wiley. She's the executive director of finance with Cabot, Cabot Public Schools. We have Mr. Aaron Randolph. He's the executive director of curriculum instruction. And then Dr. Melanie Durkoff, who is the director of federal programs. So please welcome. All of us is going to come up and stand beside me just for more support or in case we have to ask her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's Friday afternoon. This is the most coveted presentation spot <laughs> of any event. So thanks, Robin. Appreciate this for, for setting this up. Um, and a lot of excited uh, faces from the crowds. That's good. The European Zoom world is also just a problem to be set up this afternoon. And uh, we do appreciate the opportunity for us to come share and publish. Uh, what time on that is the, the topics of all time? Office conversation. And, and to be perfectly honest, we don't have a set presentation for the film group. I think that Vision has done a great job today going through so much information, really creating conversation amongst the group. Kind of what we want to do is just talk through some of the things that we deal with and what it looks like in our office. A little bit of background. So I spent the previous four years overseeing federal programs in the district um, and very grateful uh, for the help that I can say I got from. The division, uh, help from AADA, um, and also, honestly, the relationships I was able to form um, with our finance office. Because I can tell you, as a, as a federal programs person, program side, the curriculum background, um, and you, know, you have a boss that says, you should learn more about finance. Go, play. <laughs> um, and I kind of got tossed into the fire. The first thing I did was to, one, talk to a lot of the folks in the AAFC, Jenny and some of the others, um, but also to sit down with Tina Wiley and say, okay, help me understand, what, what is this? Um, and I met with the ASBO mentoring group a couple of weeks ago, one of the things I brought up. You all have to remember, especially people coming from the programming side or people from the school side, they had three hours of school finance training. In that three hours of school finance training, probably not a lot of time spent in e-finance. Um, probably very little time spent within at GMS or Indistar or any of those other components. Um, so, so it can be very overwhelming for children. So having that relationship, I know what said today, is so essential. And I'll leave an attitude to that. So this is my first year to actually be full-time federal programs. I shared a little bit last year with Aaron Randolph, and Dr. Thurman kind of did the same thing to me that he did to Aaron four years previously, and I got brought into a meeting, had no idea. You know, see one of those, you get a text from Karen Davis, the secretary, that says, Dr. Thurman was to meet with you at 2.15, and you're like, what did I say? What did I do? What, you know, what kind of trouble am I in? Um, and I was in trouble, um, so therefore I got put into federal programs. Um, <laughs> but... Um, Purgatory. Yeah, yeah. Purgatory. There you go. Yeah, I'm kind of like right in a lower level right there. Um, so I did have the luxury of having a year with Aaron before I came into the program, which I know for a lot of people in federal programs, you're just kind of thrust into the position. And I cannot say how invaluable it was to have kind of a year of someone to mentor me side by side before I took over the program first time. It makes a huge difference. Um, my background is I was a high school English teacher for 17 years, and then I was a literacy specialist. So they took the most non-numbers person <laughs> in the entire district and put them in the numbers. Like my meme on my Facebook post the other day was, I'm an English major, you do the math. So that tells you everything about my personality when it comes to numbers, but I am a rule follower, um, and I am all about processes and procedures, and honestly, that's what I have found to be the most um, knowledgeable part, because I have Tina and Paula, who I could not live without. I mean, they are literally the pod next to me, which makes a huge difference, and for a lot of districts, they don't 
have that benefit that you're all in the same pod, um, that is crucial that you be close in proximity that you can get up and go next door and ask a question. And we all have open door policies. I do the same thing with Aaron. I mean, even to you know, even now I'm still reaching out to him saying, you know, hey, this Title One school wants to spend their parental involvement money this way, which by the way is the hardest money to spend in the world. Um, is, you know, is this okay? I've read the Edgar, I've read the UGG, you know, is this still allowable? So um, not only the communication that I have with Tina and Paula, and they, I just let them do the numbers and they come and tell me if I have to fix something, which is basically how I've kind of operated this year. One person that's missing up here, my secretary, Bernice Caps, um, I could not do anything without her. I have an e-finance account. Again, I'm an English major, <laughs> um, and I don't want to know how some of the stuff in e-finance works. I just need someone to tell me if I've messed up and, and how to fix it. But Bernice Caps, my secretary, she knows codes. I mean, she can spit out a code faster um, than I can recite, you know, a soliloquy from Hamlet. So um, having someone like that to do those pieces are invaluable as well. But you know, I really rely on Tina and Paul, and they're probably sick of seeing me in their office. Um, but I really rely on them just, you know, being able to say, okay, I've gotten this email from Annette. What does this mean? You know, what report does this mean? And, and am I going to need um, Google Translate to be able to figure out what I need to do with this? Um, and they are wonderful, too, being able to take the finance part of it, because just like Aaron said, we don't speak finance. Um, we speak programs and processes and procedures um, and being able to make it in a language that I can understand, which I think for federal programs, people who are not numbers people who don't have that background, that's the crucial part. Um, you know, I can help schools make a decision and lead them through that process we talked about this morning, um, but I also need someone to back me up that when I said yes, that it is okay to say yes to that particular set of funds. Okay. This is my 11th year at Cabot, and some of y'all can probably relate to this, but in my 11 years there, Erin was number three federal person that we had, and Melanie is number four federal person that we had. So, you know, a lot of times that the person that gets, you know, put into that role, you know, it's just a, okay, we're going to pass this, uh, on, you know, this assignment on to you. And there's no, no advanced notice or training or anything. So, you know, that does make it really hard to come into a position like that. And uh, so, you know, we try to do everything we can to help them uh, know how to handle the, the budget and finance side of it. And uh, they rely a lot on Paula to run reports for them. Uh, you know, sometimes they're not in any finance a lot so sometimes it's you know it's easy for we know the numbers and so we can whiz in there and get them a report a whole lot faster than what they could do you sure they could learn how to do it and they could get in and do and run them if they you know they're they're smart people they could do that but you know it's usually a lot quicker for us to just be able to go in there and do that for them so uh but we do have we get questions all the time about you know i've got this title one money principals will ask us you know can i spend that this money on this or what can i spend this money on of course that's not our that's not our language we don't we don't we don't always know that and so that's where you know we work together and pass that on to well let's run this by them first and let them tell you what if that's an allowable expense and as far as like, you know, one thing that we have a lot of, you know, we're large schools, so we have a lot of issues with people doing things on time. I don't know what it is about, you know, you give them a date and everything and an email way in advance, but there's just something about, um, you know, you give them a deadline and that was like, that, that meant me, you know. So, you know, there's, they, they have been great about helping us to be able to, you know, to get funds spent in, you know, like we need to have them spent. Uh, especially at the end of the year when we get to the part about trying to close out and uh, roll into the new year. Uh, we do everything we can to try to get everything that we can get paid by that, that last uh, federal poll in June. And that way we're not carrying our money out on the books until 
September, October, uh, when we get reimbursed for funds. So, of course, that means a lot of work on our side because we're having to run uh, extra payrolls to, uh, early to get that done and get that out there. But, you know, we try really hard to do that. And they work really hard to make sure that people get their, you know, their purchases in and we get them paid for so that we will be able to get reimbursed for things uh, uh, earlier and not have to carry that for so long. Uh, so, but, you know, I think we have a good working relationship and, you know, anytime we have something that, you know, that we, you know, a lot of times things come up, we just, neither one of us, none of us know how to handle it. So we may have to like work together and try to figure out, well, you know, what should we do here? Or is this allowable? Who do we check with? Uh, you know, they may know what's, what's, uh, what we can do. And then for us, it's, we, we know what numbers to put on things. So, you know, that's kind of the, where we can work together on that. So looking at the topics of discussion, first thing we have on there is the, the comparability report. Um, and that's one of those things that we always go to Paula. We say, Paula, we need this report run. Um, and she will hand us the 16 pages of staff that we then go through and highlight in different colors, who this is supplied to, who's not, so on and so forth. Um, but that first step is being able to go and ask for that, that roster. Because, and I'm not speaking uh, ill to anybody's web page keepers, uh, but you all know if you try to get on your district <laughs> website and print off the roster, it may not be the most up to date. Or you try to get contracts from personnel, maybe that's not what it is. But it's like, we know that what's an e-finance is going to be the truth per the division. <laughs> ADE is going to see that as being fact. So it helps to have that. So you just go and sit. You worry about trying to pull it from somebody. That is our first email. All I can you run this report for us. And then we can sit down and start our process and then enter in that final report. FGMS processes, I will tell you. Um, and, um, you know, we, we were in on this when I first came out three years ago with training with you all. And it, it has probably helped, I think, our uh, federal programs really understand more about the budget side versus just arguing with the Excel spreadsheets and trying to get everything put in a certain way. Um, it has probably helped our communication with finance as well because I can say, Paula, this is the exact report I need to run. I can send her the commissioner's memo and say, here it is, and then Paula will go, since what we did last year, I think I did this one last year. And we spent about five minutes arguing about what we did last year, and then <laughs> she sends that over, we add that extra column on the right-hand side, we plug our stuff in, and we submit it, and it, it makes life so much easier for us. Um, playing with Star has its own challenges, and Dr. Kirkup is the Star queen, so she can speak more to that. Um, but that's just one of the, the, the big pieces for that FGMS, is being able to go to your finance officer and say, I need this report. They give it to you, you submit your stuff, you get your approval, here is that spreadsheet, Let's make sure the budget matches this. Anytime we make changes, it's the same thing. And we just carry on that spreadsheet throughout the year. We've got it in our shared Google Drive. We make adjustments, we submit it, we get approval, hopefully, and then we go through the thing again. So that, that's made it really easy for us, I feel like. Rank and order, again, that falls right into the FGMS as well. Um, so again, that's just so much nicer now that everything preloads. It just helps us to have everything on top of it. Budget review. Um, that is one of those things that when I, I talked to, to Melanie, I just said, you know, weekly, if it's monthly, whatever it is, you just got to keep up with it. got to say, I need this report. Run. Let's see where we are. Let's see where my budget is. We have a Google spreadsheet that we actually keep in federal programs and we share with our accounting office. So at any point, if you feel like, hey, oh, shoot, anybody else have a problem where people get to a new building at the end of the year without being noticed? No? Okay. Um, so those things happen, and you see the board minutes, you're like, oh crap, we got to fix that. But can I say that? Is that okay? <laughs> so things like that pop up, we can work on it, we've got a shared document, we go together, and then we go and handle the budget side of it after the fact. Um, but again, just the, the good dynamic relationship, I think, is critical to that. Um. You know, we've just, there's been times, and again, because I'm new this year, but, you know, there have been times that I was unaware uh, that I had extra money. 
Um, and so it is always great that uh, I, you know, I know that Paula or Tina one is going to come to me or, or to Denise. Usually it's Denise and then Denise calls me and she says, we've got this extra money. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do extra money. Um, which everybody thinks is great, but sometimes it, it causes its own problems when you think you spent all of your allocation and then you get another memo that you have a little more money to spend and then you have to kind of go back to the table and sit back down with your principals again so um that is that is always huge um time certifications and pars you know we talk about salary redistributions um i do want to say so i've been i was in atlanta this past week for, for a conference and it was for one of my other jobs because federal programs like many of you in here is not my only position in the district um so it's one of Four that I one of four titles that I have. So you know I don't get to I don't get to spend all 100% of my time at federal programs. But um, but I was at a, at a conference and one of the roundtables I sat at talked about how do you not be siloed. Um, now I was probably the smallest district at the table. There were people like from Nashville and um, from out of Florida and then parts of North Carolina and South Carolina where they have actually districts within districts because they have hundreds of thousands of of, of kiddos and one of their, they kind of turned to me, they said, well, you're a fairly small district, communication shouldn't be an issue. Um, and I don't think that's always necessarily the case. I think it's about the culture and the relationships that you build. The size of your district really shouldn't have any impact on whether or not you're communicating with each other. You know, if geographic distance is causing that problem, then you find a way to make that not be a problem any longer. Where technology is such that you don't have to do that. And honestly, I prefer face-to-face -face um, and I prefer um, phone calls. Um, salaries, you know, sometimes I don't always catch it in the minutes. So Paul and Tina will come to me and we'll get that fixed. But um, I do want to say, too, from a federal program's perspective, I love it when I'm at the table with not just my business people, but also um, personnel. Um, we talked a lot about this at this conference, you know, even sitting down with technology. So really when you're looking at spending monies because there are times that federal programs and or your categorical funds can help out with things that that make things possibilities when other times some people sit at the table and say well we can't do that um well yeah you probably can but have me at the table or you know have your curriculum everyone needs to be at the table regardless of what your your title is in order to make sure that these funds that we have been sent by the feds and by the state are used where they should be used and that's to help kids um, and that can only happen when everyone is at the table. Thank you. Salary is going to jog my memory. Now, one thing that I will say from an accounting standpoint, a finance standpoint, federal programs, one thing that I ran into early on federal programs is here I am doing my job, doing multiple things, working on stuff, and then somebody would come to me and go, hey, did you hear about those interventionists we're adding? And I'd go, no. <laughs> and and said, yeah, yeah. All, all the time, <laughs> and I go, oh, uh, where is that money coming from? And I go, Tina. <laughs> and Tina would go, I thought you were paying for it. <laughs> and so then there, there would become this impasse. And, and so what Tina and I were able to do early on was to advocate for each other to say, like, he needs to be at this table. Like, she needs to be in the room. You can't make a, a curriculum decision that have financial implications don't have somebody from finance in the room, and vice versa. Um, and so it was good for us, going back to, you know, we could say division of duties, I know the auditors love that, but it helps when you have more eyes on, on what you're doing. I think that's a, a key component of why we, we've been able to be successful in that. Um, so very grateful for the relationships, and yes, uh, Amy, uh, we, we do have lunch together every so once in a while, but we do uh, have donuts, so that is something that we do in our office, we can't be friendly. <laughs> Any questions for us? It's Friday afternoon. Somebody yeah, has to have yeah. a question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Wait until your budget process is financed. Do you wait till the July 1 all the Well, a, a large, a large. Uh, when do we start the budgeting process? Uh, do we do that? Start that in uh, basically in June, or uh, you know, toward the end of the year, or are we waiting until later? Uh, we go ahead and start. We know that, of course, for us now that they do their uh, uh, 
have to have something submitted in June, that kind of really helps us out a little, little bit that, you know, we kind of can, a lot of our, what we pay out of, out of our funds is, is uh, people. So uh, that is, allows us to go ahead and get things set up. And uh, with that being a large part of our budget, we can, we work, we start working in personnel budgeting and we'll, we'll have contracts out by the end of April. So we like to, we, you know, as we're getting contracts out, you know, kind of know where people are going to be paid next year when we can. Uh, you know, not saying that some of that won't change before the year starts, but, uh, but, you know, we like to try to, you know, already have that in the works and set up. So we do, we are able to start with that and let them know what the salary part of that is going to be so that when we are you know, working, they can go ahead and make some, you know, maybe some allocations about what they, you know, what all they're, they're going to have left, you know, before they get that final uh, amount that they know what it is, uh, like in the, the next final and the next final. But, you know, we'll get it multiple times, but we'll, we'll make adjustments. But uh, I think it does, we do start early and it's mostly the salary part. And then, you know, like through the summer, we may actually uh, have some uh, curriculum related type things that we need to know where the funds for that is coming from. And I think it also helps us to know, uh, if we know kind of what we have left over after salaries, then we have a, a better idea of what's left to be used for other things too. So the earlier, I think the earlier that we can work on it, the better that it is for all around because you know, it's hard to, to be in a meeting and someone say, well, can you pay for this out of this fund? And, you know, I, well, we don't know yet. So, you know, I think it's better if we have a, a pretty good idea of what we can pay for out of different funds. Anything else? Dr. Hernandez is going to come up and close, but before we do so, uh, I just want to thank everybody for participating today. And it goes back to you and your participation, those that are Zooming, the department, all of those from the department that were here today and input, Cabot School District. Um, any questions that we had from the audience, Arch Board, Maryland, we just appreciate you so very much. And also to ASBO and to the Federal Coordinators Boards for approving um, for the lunch purchase. Um, I hope you found this very helpful, and we do want your feedback. Um, Maryland has sent out the evaluation form, and if this is something that you would like to see maybe on an annual basis, maybe every other year, we definitely want your feedback. We want this to be relevant. We do not want this to be a waste of anyone's time. How can we make this um, even better? Um, because we, I, I thought it was great, um, and we want to build upon this. So, um, again, thank you very much, and please make sure you complete that evaluation. So I'm going to turn it over to you. And Marilyn uh, is sending out an email or just sent out an email with the evaluation form. It's not going to be your typical evaluation form you get through ESC Works. It's one that's through a Google Doc. <laughs> And it's also on, on the chat for anyone that is Zooming. So, um, Deb, did you have any, anything? Okay, well, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Fernandez. Thank you, Rob. Um, so, just real short closing. Uh, just thank you for being able to come today and do this work. Uh, I think it's very important. I know that uh, your days are busy, and I think working in districts and Know, being part of the department and going into my new role at AAE, I, you know, I've been around a lot of these things for a while, being the assistant commissioner of finance. I know how um, 
difficult to work is and Kat lets go and so we talk about it. But, you know, she talked about being in her little thing and not knowing about the program side. I know we experienced that a lot in districts and what Kevin had to share is very important about how there's got to be that cross collaboration. So I would encourage you the message to go back to fellow administrators, fellow uh, finance people, fellow federal programs It's the key to doing all these things is communication work. Um, you know, when we were going through all these things today, very complicated. Schools become very complicated. Everybody wants to know where the knowledge is going, how programs are being spent under the new SS school index. There's very much a focus on effectiveness of programs. And so finance and, and federal programs and everybody that's in these programs have to be on step as we move forward. I think uh, anything can be done with students when you have time and money in the set. Money to be able to do things in the time where you have to be able to problem solve this life. And so I uh, look forward to my new role uh, going to the AAA director. So when I get to come to your district, it'll be to get awards and, and help you and truly support you, as opposed to some of the times when I go to the now, it's the, being in fiscal distress or state takeover. And so that's going to be a very, uh, very fun opportunity for me. Uh, so thank you for coming.